Hi, I'm Jessica with the Santa Paula Art Museum, and welcome to Art Club. Okay, so today's art project is called A Bug's Life. And today we'll be making a bunch of different bugs using their design, along with giving them some personality. So what we're learning today with is watercolors. And we'll be using a technique called wet on wet, when um, the paint is still wet and you're adding more color into it. You'll also start off by learning about complementary colors and collaboration. What is collaboration? Do you know what collaboration is? Good. Well, I'll tell you what I think collaboration is. Collaboration is when you're taking ideas with someone else and you work along together. And it's not just working alone. So when you think about it, two brains are better than one. So the materials we'll be using today include just plain paper for drawing. Um, you can use printer paper if you have at home or just regular paper. And then you'll have a larger sheet of paper that's also a bit more thicker and this will be for painting using your watercolors. I did mention we're using watercolors. If you don't have watercolors at home, you can always substitute by using food coloring or maybe diluting some acrylic paint if you have any at home. We'll also be using a pencil and pens if you have pens. If you don't have any pens, pencils will do just fine. Also have a water cup for the waters and a brush. Let's get started. You'll want to start off with your large piece of paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush, make sure it's loaded with water, and just pick one color to start off. And I'm not gonna pick it too saturated, it might, it's going to be a little light. And we're gonna do about like six or seven shapes. So I started off with green. Maybe I'm gonna need a little more color. Use lots of water, see? So that was probably my mistake. I did not add enough water the first time. And that's my first shape. See how the color is pulling up a little? That's okay. And try to make different shapes so that you have a variety. Next color I'll use is blue. See how I keep going back to that water? Just use a little bit of color. Lots of water. I'm thinking maybe like that would be like a potato chip triangle shape. We'll see what kind of a bug we get there. And then yellow. Yellow shape, oh that one's a little darker. Oh, that's a cool shape. I'll keep that, keep that shape there. Because I used more pigment, I'm just going to be adding more water and if you don't want this to be this shape to be too dark, you can always just add on to that shape, make it a little bigger. Now we'll use purple. You're allowed to choose whatever color you want for any of these shapes. Look at that. Okay, going to have to add way more water. I like how it's already pulling. Keep in mind we'll also have to take a step for drying, but don't worry about getting it just right. Everyone's is going to be a little different. Watercolors, I like them a lot. It's usually just because you never know what you might get. It's very impromptu. When something's impromptu, it just means that it can go any way and you just gotta work with what you got. Okay, now that I've got my colors, I did five, maybe let's do one more. We'll go ahead and do a little bug right there. Right here. Perfect. Looks like we've got a couple colors here. So we've got green, blue, red, purple, yellow, and brown, but we can say it's orange. And we're gonna go ahead and learn about those complementary colors. Next, you're gonna choose a complementary color, and we'll be talking a little bit more about what complementary colors are. Ever wondered what the complementary color is of green or yellow? When you think about complementary colors, keep in mind that we're talking about the color wheel. 
So you know what primary colors are. It's red, yellow, and blue. So blue's complementary color on the color wheel would be orange. And you get orange by adding the two primary colors, red and yellow. So orange is across the color wheel from blue, creating them to be complementary colors. And the reason that complementary colors work together is because they really make each other pop. So red's complementary color is going to be green because you're mixing the other two primary colors of blue and yellow to get green. Um, green's complementary color is actually red, which is a cross from their color wheel. The complementary color of yellow would be purple because you get purple by mixing blue and red. And those two primary colors make the complementary color purple. Now let's drop some complementary colors into our wet spots. So if I were to start off again how we talked about complementary colors, red and green being their complementaries, I'm going to go ahead and add some red to the green. I'm going to go ahead and load my brush again with water. This time we're going to go ahead and grab a lot of that red so that my brush is full. You can see how drenched it is. And I'm going to go ahead and drop some small drops of color. Whoa, that was pretty intense. And they will pull. Remember how we talked about our technique of wet on wet? This is it in action. So you can see that the color starts to mix around and disperse. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off very well. Make sure no color is on. If you have a paper napkin, go ahead and clear off your your brush and I can see that the water is coming out clear so that means our brush is clean. Let's try with yellow. So yellow's complementary color is purple. So I'm going to go ahead and load my brush. It's got water and activate it into the purple. And this time I'll just be very careful to barely touch the paper and see how that color pulls off. We'll do some polka dots here. This is me using wet on wet. You can experiment with bigger dots or smaller dots and you can also connect them around. So here I am just dragging my brush along and I'm creating a new shape and texture likes so that it might give our bug like a hard shell cool type. Feel free to experiment this way by using the watercolors. It's really fun. So let's try with this shape. I'm going to put orange as the complementary color of blue. I'm just letting those gather. I connect that part there and there. It's very cool. You'll always get a different outcome. So. So I'm going to finish up here by adding yellow into the purple, green into the red, and blue into the orange. Um, this though, you're feel, feel free to watch me do it as you experiment, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started on these. Now you try. Pause the video for a few minutes and come back after you've added your complementary colors. Next, we'll be drawing on the page, but let's help it dry a little. We're going to be using a technique with paper towel where I'm going to go ahead and bunch it up. And you're going to be blotting. So you'll be dabbing the paper a little. And it's okay if some colors mix together. We kind of are pro for um, tech textures. And that's what you'll end up getting is like a very variety of textures. And this will also help the paint dry quicker so that we can move on to our next step. This one is very saturated. 
But look, I added, I got a new design from blotting. Looks like we're ready to start the collaboration. Remember, this means working together to share ideas and make something that comes from working together and it's not just working alone. It's time to trade papers. It doesn't matter what they've done, you're going to try to make something creative with what someone else has done. So you're gonna go ahead and swap papers, but make sure to say thank you and be, be courteous of your person's work. Next, you're gonna get your supplies ready. and You're going to use a smaller piece of paper along with a pen or pencil. Make sure to pause the video and when you've gotten your supplies ready, go ahead and put, push play and we'll get started. Next, we're going to practice using bug parts. And what parts do bugs have? They have legs, heads and eyes, wings, and antenna. Now I'm going to do some examples and do some legs. They can be short or long. They're, they might be straight or bent or curvy. Do they have feet or no feet? So I'll do some examples using straight lines to do short legs or long legs. And I like adding little boots to the bottom just to give them a little personality. Are they hairy? You can add extra lines to see if their legs are a little hairy. You might have some funky looking, looking legs. You can give them zigzag legs. And how many legs do bugs usually have? Let's do a mock bug right here. This was my bug. They have six, right? So maybe I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can go ahead and add different shapes to them. I wouldn't want to come across this bug. It seems kind of spooky. All right, and how about heads and eyes? There's two ways that you can do them. I like to do both a variety of the dark shell for the head with little white pupil eyes or dark little beady eyes but a white shell. Kind of makes them look like a little ghosts. Or your bug might even have extra eyes. So you might want to add multiple eyes. Bugs that watch you. That's spooky. Okay. And how about some some normal or friendly eyes. I call them friendly where you can have pupils. So this show this might even show the direction of where your bug might be looking. It, it adds to their personality and the story to be honest. I like that. Now we've got wings. I like to go be a little more creative with the wings. Instead of just doing like a C-shaped wing, why not go ahead and go for the B-shape? So this might be like a winged bug, right, that flutters. Or maybe even go with the wavy line and they might have multiple set of wings. My favorite type of bugs are the dragonflies because they have very pretty wings. They're a little iridescent and they flutter and it looks like they have more than one pair. So you can even do that. But I want you guys to be very creative with all of this. Antenna, super fun. It's always the smaller details that makes the bugs different, right? So it might even have longer antenna or maybe very whirly antennas, making them wavy short antenna, maybe even zigzag antenna. You are free to choose. And that's what I have. Looks great and once you've done a couple samples and thought it out because these are your designs, you'll go ahead and start doing the details onto your other collaborated project. So now that you have your reference sheet done and you can use it to create samples, you're going to transfer that over to your bugs. I'm gonna go ahead and show you one example right here on this shell. 
and we're gonna do try to add those details in. And you want to think about where am I gonna put the head or where am I gonna put the legs? Is there room for wings? These are all design choices. So it looks right here that I, I could add a nice little plump head, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that there. And I'm gonna walk you through one whole sample and you can check check to see if you like these ideas or not and you can decide to make your own. So this is a little head shape and I think it'd be great if they had eyes right there. What about the legs? Should I put them on each side or maybe maybe he's standing like on his tippy toes? So I'm thinking I might even do that. I'm gonna add his six legs all together because it looks like he's just standing. Oh, he's funny. And then is there room for wings? This might be his hard shell back, so I could add one line to show that there's two wings on each side. Maybe his little wings are picking out from underneath the shell. I'm gonna go ahead and color this in. So he's got a head, antenna, wings and legs. And you're gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the bugs. And make sure to create a variety so that they all look different. There. You can watch me as I add my bug parts and then pause the video when you, while you are doing your bug parts and then resume. Quick overview, so we're gonna go over what I did add from the beginning of the project to the end. So we know that we started off with watercolors and we learned about complementary. So if we were to go over to this red bug, we know that the green was a complementary, right? So after that, we swapped with partners and did a little creative designing with their bugs. And overall, I really like the variety that we got I also went ahead and embellished a little by adding details because I felt like it was missing something so I added leaves and the little grass. You can do this also if you have markers, if you'd like to add a little um, detail or if you have extra hand, uh, time on your hands. Maybe you could recreate the project again. Thanks for joining me today. I had a lot of fun making bugs with you and if you have a little extra time on your hands, why don't you give them some names? or maybe add a story to your bugs. You can also, like I said, add some details with the markers and give them some leaves to munch on. Thanks for making art with me today. Hope to see you next time at the next art club.